are you involved in any uh, major events or activities with with those groups? I volunteer some of my time, uh, and I'll give money. You know, in fact, uh, my book is one example. I, I don't make a penny on the book. It took me four years to do it, quite a few bucks, but all proceeds, every penny goes to the Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation uh, for children of deceased Marines uh, for their education. And I, I had a hard time. I wanted to do something, and, and so I figured I'd, I'd write my book the best I could, uh, and if it sells, if people like it, then it goes to a really good cause. JJ, what's the name of your book? Over and Out. <clears throat> Over and Out, when did you publish it? July 2013. Yeah, it's not that old. It was just a year old, wow. Yeah. And what, what does the book talk about? Everything. But From my, you know, even a funny little story in boot camp, you know, that, uh, that I, I love telling the guys and uh, I took it step by step. I, I, tried to, I tried to explain to my daughter who has no idea what a rice patty looks like, what a rice patty feels like. And, and I tried to tell people, like my mom, my mom was instrumental for me to write it. T tell, tell them, Jimmy, tell them what it was like to, to be with your brothers over there. You know, and, and that's, the book's about me, but it's about us. You know, I tried very, very hard. There's no vulgarity in it. I left out the brutality of war. I, I don't want that. You know, we all know what brutality of war is. I just try to, to emphasize how we live together as one, watched each other's back, protected each other, cared for each other, shared with each other. And over and out, because I was a radio man, over and out, and also because I was one year, six months, and 23 days in the Marine Corps, and I was out. So I was over and out and over and out. <laughs> so that's why it's called that. Great. JJ, is there anything else you'd like to add? Any other memorable experiences that we haven't talked about yet? Probably a million after I leave here. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there will. And I thought I was pretty, I skipped over a lot. Uh, you can go back. Well, just one little kind of funny story in boot camp that I, I love to tell, uh, if you don't mind. Absolutely, go ahead. We were in boot camp, and we all got, all the Marine Corps, I guess everybody, got their little funny boot camp stories. And when I'm with a group of Marines, that always comes up because I like to listen and laugh to what happened to them, and, like they laugh and ha happened to me. But we were in boot camp, oh, a good three weeks, maybe four. And uh, we were marching good, but not great. So one day, one drill instructor took us out on the parade grounds, and we were the only ones on the parade ground. The whole thing was empty. So he took us out there, and that drill instructor stood there, and he started saying, left oblique, huh, right oblique, huh, about face, huh, right face, huh, left face, huh, about face, huh. And before you know it, there was 50 of us all going in different directions. Everybody thought they were right, but, but you know, and he was yelling about face, huh, and then everybody going this way, and then everybody turn around and go back the other. Well, I looked at, I was facing him, and the DI fell to the ground, and he was laying on his back, and he was crying. And, and, and like a baby, his, his arms were waving, and his legs were waving in the, in the air, yelling, why, God? Why? Why did you give me these stupid assholes? Why? And he was going, eh. And I, I thought it was the funniest thing I ever saw in my life. And I'm, you can't laugh. And if you saw you laughing. So, I mean, I, I would walk, and I walked right by him laying there. And, and then he said, stop, and he was yelling, stop, 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 stop. So everybody stopped. But, I mean, everybody was, <laughs> and he told everybody, come here. You know, come here. So we all went. He goes, look, just carry your rifle. Just, just, I don't want you to carry it. I want you to just carry your rifle. Okay? And we all did. He said, now let's go back to the barracks. So we were all walking in a circle. And he, and he kept walking saying, my God, I got the stupidest assholes I have ever had in my life. And we were all, <laughs> he wouldn't let us march. Just walk. You know? And then when he got back to the barracks, he said, just get out of my sight. <laughs> that's, 
That's it. Well, it's just funny. Did you guys ever learn how to march? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Boot camp was good for people, I think. I wanted to get that little story in there because them guys out there don't understand. They're gonna laugh at. It. They're they're probably tell me of quite a few. Are there any other memorable experiences that you want to tell about? What else did you forget? Well, uh, nothing. Just the medevacs. I just remember all the medevacs. You know, I think those are the most vividly. Memories you've the helicopters. It's still to this day, and not far from me, a, a hospital with a helo pad. You know, it's just amazing. That, you know, but um, I hear them. I can hear them. You know, I had a hard time at uh, when I first got home. Like I said, with cobwebs, co cobwebs. To this day, I'll see one and uh, pop my memory back. Uh, and the 4th of July celebration when I took my kids, you know, when they were little, I, I had a hard time out there on the blanket. I, you know, when the sun went down and they started, it's just, you know, I, it was hard for me to, to sit there, you know. Thank God there's no lights or nothing. It's just, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't like it. You know, and I never touched the gun since Vietnam. I never picked another weapon up, I, and nor will I. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to touch them, you know. That's it. Been there, done it. Just how I believe. I don't want to. So, JJ, one of the stories I know you wanted to tell me about, there's a story behind this photo that you have. Do you want to hold that up? Yes. We were, we were out on a patrol one day. And we were only out for about 45 minutes and the guys up front stopped and I knew something was up you know they, they were pointing and, and here it was a, a soldier uh, a Vietnamese soldier we thought that was taking a shit right right on the side of the path and he pulled this by himself all by himself he had no weapon and he ran. He pulled up his pants, and he ran. So we chased him, and we were we were right on his tail. He was running fast. We were running fast. We we you know he wasn't going to get away from us. So we entered this like field, open field, and there was gigantic. It looked like mounds of insect ant hills or something. There was there was some, and we saw the lid like a submarine lid going down on top of the mount, one of the moles molehills so we stopped you know and oh <laughs> what are we going to do so we walked around to the molehill i'll call it a molehill we, we walked around we encircled the molehill and then the guys were saying uh, jj let's frag it let's 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 just throw grenades in there and you know we know he's in there i, I saw that the arm going down you know so um i stood there i, I was uh, squad leader at the time and, and I said no it was something in my heart uh, the, way, the way I was raised I, I, cu I couldn't do it I it just I he, he didn't have a weapon he didn't shoot at us uh, and I thought he literally got caught with his pants down so I thought we'll try and take him alive so and the other guys they didn't like it and, and I think it was the only time we ever argued uh, that they wanted to just frag him and move on so and I kind of I, I said no uh, and I didn't like it. And they were, I heard them behind me saying, come on, you know, like, come on, let's just do it and get away from here. You know, like, screw him. You know, and, no, no, no. I said, let's see if we can get him alive. You know, and they, all the guys didn't like it at all. But I, I finally stood there and after about a minute of nobody talking, I said, look, let me try and get him out. You know, so the guys were worried that if you lift up that lid, you know, like, so he's going to throw stuff out, you know, or whatever. We, you know, afraid of the unknown under that lid. So I knew that. So kind of got up there with my fingers and I lifted up the lid uh, of the hip top and I threw a smoke grenade in. And it was a red, red smoke grenade. And the smoke grenade was and the smoke was coming out and we just stood there. 
stood there and stood there and the sm and smoke grenade went away no more so i went up to the mound again and i lifted up i threw a green grenade in there and closed the lid and sure enough shh, all the green smoke was pouring out and and stayed like that for a minute and then it dissipated well i got a yellow i was determined i got a yellow grenade smoke grenade and i lifted up the lid and i threw the yellow in there and the smoke was pouring out and pouring out, and then all of a sudden the lid started to open up and we saw a hand coming up and everybody was yelling watch 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 his hands watch make sure he doesn't throw anything out but watch watch there might be more in there and, and so we were we had all our guns completely circled around them waiting waiting wait so he came up and he rolled down the hill and he was coughing and gagging and and gagging and, and couldn't breathe and he he was uh, on his hands and knees and he was coughing and spitting and I remember looking at him I was, oh my god he he looked like a tie-dye doll he had, he had red and and green and yellow like all over him and I remember I look I picked up his chin and I was looking at his face and we were checking for any weapons or any anything explosive or anything like that and I saw his mouth was completely covered with different colors it's solid smoke and I actually felt sorry for him you know I thought he was gonna die right there he couldn't breathe so we were all like well, what are we gonna do now so all of a sudden we noticed that his uniform his uniform wasn't a North Vietnamese uniform uh, and he was tall. He was too tall for a, a Vietnamese soldier. So he, we got him to stand up and we saw that I think he's a Chinese soldier. You know, it looked like, what well, I, I never saw a Chinese, we never saw a Chinese soldier there. Uh, we didn't. But it looked like it was yellow and red. And, um, so we stood him up and he had no weapon. He had no hat. He had no insignias on him. Uh, but he looked like like an officer uniform, maybe. Anyhow, I went through his pockets, and he had this map. Uh, it's a flag of Mao Zedong. Feels like silk. He had that in one pocket, and he had 50 condoms in the other pocket. And we were all laughing, like, man, you know, like, what's, what's this dude doing? You know, like, uh, so, he, and that's it. He had no money, no wallet, no, no nothing. All he had was this flag on them and the condoms so we called back to uh, golf company and told them we think we have a, a Chinese soldier that we captured so they didn't they were saying come on stop kidding around and we were saying no we think we have a, a Chinese soldier you know uh, so they said well we'll bring him bring him back bring him back immediately and we'll have uh, s2 or s4 or whatever waiting for you when you uh, when you get back in the wire. So we started marching back and, and I was telling those guys, I said, see, you know, instead of us being out for four or five, six hours, now we go right back. So it's only, instead of that, we're, we're back in an hour and a half. So and the tension wore off and we were walking back and now we had other squads calling us saying, hey, you guys really get a, a Chinese soldier? And we said, yeah, we, we think so. so and then another squad would call in and say, uh, you know, what's, is this a joke or what? And, you know, are you guys playing a game? We said, no, we're bringing it back. Well, in the meantime, Goth Company got on, told the guys, shut up, get off the air. And then they, they were saying, how far are you? We have uh, officers here waiting for you. So sure enough, we came to the tree line. We saw a battalion area and I don't know, maybe 30, 40 guys we saw all starting to gather around where Goth Company goes in and out of. And the closer we got, it went from 30 to 50 to next thing you know, there was a hundred guys all yelling and screaming and jumping up and down. And they were saying, where is he? You know? And he was following. He was he, the guy, the prisoner was following us, you know, and just he, we tied his hands and he came up and there must have been, I don't know, 150 guys all, all like, you know, oh my God. And then I saw the brass the officers were standing there and we walked up and the officers looked at him and then came over to me and they said, JJ, what, what the freaking did you do to that guy? And I, cause he was all, all painted up in different colors. He, he really, his hair, everything did look like a tie dye doll. And, uh, I told them how we got him. I said, we threw smoke grenade one after the other until he finally gave up, you know? And, and uh, 
they took them away and I gave them the 50 condoms and I said, this is what we found. Everybody was laughing, you know, like, uh, you know, and everybody, same thing. Like, what the heck? You know, but I never gave the flag up. I never said a word about the flag. I, I kept it in my pocket. And when we got back to the hooch, everybody was yelling and screaming, you know, and, and we got inside the hooch and the guys that were on squad with me that day, the guys that were on patrol with me, I had them sign it and uh, their name and their nickname. And after all these years, I, I found it and I put it in a frame and it's, it's, it's a treasure to me that we did get a Chinese soldier, prisoner of war, without spending a shot, who was taking a shit on the side of the road. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Well, JJ, I'd like to thank you for your service. It was an honor. Thank you for this interview.